This episode of Cat Talks is mainly designed for video. Hi, this is Dr. Narda Robinson. In this video, we will examine just the still image of a volunteer from one of our on-site medical acupuncture for veterinarians courses. And then we will watch that animal move briefly, but then I will slow that down. So the value of doing video on your patients is that you will see things you may not have seen before. You will be able to acquire this as part of your medical record and the baseline exam for maybe the first time that you saw the individual. And then follow-ups as well to see how things change. But also, as we will do here at the end, I'll show you the movement from this dog slowed down to one-fifth of the speed, which things still go by fairly quickly because he, he moves a lot in <laughs> when it was full speed. But just even starting with observation, let's look at the hair coat and see from nose to tail and from top line to toes how things change. Just look at this dog now. What are your impressions just overall? Is this a normal dog? Is there anything that catches your eye? Would you expect there to be any pain or dysfunction? Just seeing seeing this dog in your waiting area. Oh, looks like a fun, you know, happy, well-fed dog. Is there anything wrong? Well, if you employ the strategies that I outline in the How to See a Dog handout and process, then we'll take a look just starting from the nose, going over the head, and there at that occipito-atlantal junction, we see a transition from very flat hair coat to more fluffy. And many people don't even believe in or accept the idea that hair coats can show you where there is underlying fascial and other problems. But just look at this yourself and do this exercise with other dogs and cats and even horses and other animals and see what you find when you do your myofascial exam. So all through the neck from the suboccipital region to right behind the scapulae, there is just undulating hair coat and going all the way down to the thoracic limb. Then when you reach about T3 or so, there's a band that extends all the way around the body and you can see it's almost like a ring that's fluffy. And then that continues just overall to about L2, L3, where there's an angling from the spine and you can almost see along the whole dorsal midline, it looks like the hair is standing up on end. And then it flares out in a V-like fashion down to the groin and from about that L2 position back, it, as it diamonds out like that, but then just extends out. Then the, all that hair coat is in a bit of mayhem, but also much flatter. And then at about the second caudal vertebrae of the tail, then things get fluffy again. But even if you look at that, fluffy patch from the thoracic to the early lumbar phase, that's not all uniform too. And as you come down on top of the body in the lateral thorax, there's a place where it sort of goes down and then curves down a little bit. And, um, and it's just is different from the top part to the bottom part. So, and then we look at posture and with this friendly dog, friendly, excited dog, in normal state, that dog would be looking up at the instructor, but there appears to be some reluctance to extend the neck. That whole neck and cranial shoulder region looks really thickened and just coming back down. So the neck is straight and the spine. Then you get to that cranial to mid thoracic region. There's lordosis. Then it goes into a sustained kyphosis all the way down to the tail. And the tail position is a little original. And then the pelvic limbs and thoracic limbs are more uh, far apart than usual. There's not a square stance there. There seems to be some kind of compensation. Is there unweighting of the right hind limb? We don't know yet for sure. And we'll watch that. <laughs> But 
but also with the amount of restriction that we can see versus anywhere else on the left hind limb, which is the only hind limb we have this view for, it looks like the tissue, the skin sub-Q, is fairly tightly applied, adhered to the dog. So just taking all this into consideration, what we will see is some brief movement. And what I want you to do is watch how the dog moves. Now that we have a suspicion about a restricted neck and shoulder region and head region, then is that borne out by movement? How is standing? How is the changing of position going to take? Is there going to be active range of motion of the head, neck, back, tail? What are those? And then usually what we would proceed with is a nice gait analysis going to and fro away and then toward the camera and then from side to side. But here's going to be just a limited examination. So this is the full speed. That lumbosacral section does not seem to move about very much at all. It's fairly fixed and the legs are forward. The hind limbs are forward when laying down. This is at one fifth the speed. Again, that lumbosacral region and the hair coat flattening on top of it, just it's what catches my eye first. The limbs are all over the place and not tucked well. That neck is pretty stationary. If that dog wants to extend and look up, he has to lay down in the back because there's not much motion at all. And on lateral bending, there's there's not much motion. And as you'll see here, he, he can't turn his neck much. He has to move his whole body. So then how do the limbs place? Now we're not doing a full watching of the of of walking to and fro, but you can't even sustain flexion of the stifles and even the hawks that there has to be this rocking back there. So this poor guy, he can't move much on his neck and he's got a lot of dysfunction in the back and probably has been unweighting from the back to the front. Thank you.